Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, guys. My name is Sean Dexter. My name is Sean Dexter. My name is Sean Dexter, and I welcome you back to the Manga Grove for your daily Bitcoin. And hey, perhaps we cover Cardano today as well. I have with me Krisha. Krisha, say hi. What's up, you guys? And hey, Krisha, Bitcoin, doing Bitcoin things. What are your thoughts, your quick thoughts, before we move on to the dashboard? Bitcoin is here to um, sway us and get us out of our trades and rob us of our Bitcoin, guys. I mean, this is looking bullish, Sean. This is looking super, super bullish. We close some major, major candles tomorrow, so and the picture is looking good. Yes, so re and hey, Bitcoin is only shaking out people who aren't following the mango way and aren't following the stress-free way. And we've been following a very, very simple strategy ever since this consolidation started and it's been paying off. It looked a little shaky yesterday, but hey, Bitcoin pulling through and we will get to that in a bit. Let's go ahead and start with the mango research dashboard. Mango Research Dashboard right over here on the two-day time frame. Going to quickly go over something that we did in yesterday's video, but this time we do it a little bit more in a briefer fashion. Because I have the two-day time frame and it's saying neutral, right? Yes, we touched sir. on this yesterday and we also talked about how the four-day time frame was giving a long signal. The one week time frame was also giving a long, right? But yesterday, the daily, the 12 hour and the four hour were all saying, take a short position. So how do you, how do you um, come to terms with that? How do you play that? Well, we talked about how, okay, if the four hour, the 12 hour, the one day, are, which are all short to midterm time frames, if they're all saying, hey, we are looking for a short trending move, but the two day, the four day and the one week are all looking for neutral and long trends, maybe, just maybe, we find support on the higher time frames, right? And that's essentially what ended up happening. Krishna, I'm gonna switch on over to the chart right now, okay? And um, I have the weekly time frame, and I'm gonna turn on the Ichimoku time frame, Ichimoku template right over here, the mango ribbon rather, and I'm gonna have the Kijun on, the 10 SMA, and the weekly 21 EMA. Now, going back to what the dashboard was saying in yesterday's video, guys, please go ahead and check out yesterday's video. The dashboard was saying, hey, the four hour was giving a short signal, the 12 hour and the daily were all giving a short signal, right? But the four day and the one week were both saying, take a long. What does that really mean? It means that the four day and the one week are saying, buy the dip. And the four hour and the 12 hour are saying, hey, take a range trade, take a trade until you find major support on your four day and your one week, right? Because your four day and one week are saying, buy the dip. So where would you be looking to buy on the weekly, Krusha? The key June, the amazing buy opportunity has been for a very, very long time. We came down onto that, the tennis may sitting right there as well, wicked off it and bounced off it, right? That's what the weekly was telling us. Let's switch on over to the four day. Where did the four day give us an opportunity? The four day 21 EMA. We don't get this trade often, but when we do, it is often a very, very good trade to the downside and to the upside, right? Right over here, 6th April, Krisha, we had a short opportunity right off the four day 21 EMA. If you took that trade, uh, which we did, um, we got a 12% win, 13% win off that, right? now. Of course, this reversed and it broke the four day 21 EMA. And what do you know? That was a signal to go long. Now it's the same thing, guys. Right over here, came down, touched it, bounced off it. So the four day 21 EMA, the weekly Kijun, the weekly 10 SMA, all coming in line with that, as well as the dashboard telling you if you see a buy the dip opportunity on the weekly, on the four day, take it, right? Even though the four hour and the 12 hour, and the daily too was saying long, um, go for a short, a short opportunity. You need to know when to take your profits. So if you were in those trades, congratulations. If you did take profits, congratulations even more so. But Bitcoin pulling through on the weekly time frame, bouncing off that Kijun on the four day time frame, bouncing off that four day 21 EMA. And look at that, Krisha. It looks like it wants to close over the 10 SMA on the four day as well. Yeah. Yeah, like it's it's looking so good right now. It's looking so good. Really, like a lot of really people, bullish. I'm sure, got like super super faked out on um, on yesterday's move to the downside. I mean, and you're right, it was scary, right? It was it was freaking scary. But what was that one level that everyone sh you know ought to have been looking out for? It was that 8.6k region. Exactly. It was only us losing that that would have really set a bearish sort of tone for Bitcoin. Exactly. Exactly. Right, it was it was that level right there. And one more thing, Sean, on in terms of um, 
price relative to its its major levels now on my chart um now i just have my zones that i've had here for a good one two months now um since april actually and on the weekly time frame there's a weekly level sitting at around that um uh, 9325 that's the region i have marked mm -hmm. on my um on my chart yes and now in yesterday's weekly close we actually closed Different. over exactly and okay you, so we got supported yes we lost the cloud okay now i was personally looking at the cloud and that's why um i did get bearish on yesterday's break and even to a certain extent even right now i'm a bit hazy because well price is choppy in this region however what is to note on yesterday's weekly close is that we closed above that region 9325 and if you just plot a horizontal line there and you get onto your say your daily time frame or something mm -hmm. yeah let's do the daily you'll notice that we've been getting supported on that region yes and once again after wicking down we wicked all down all the way to 8891 yep so, look at the buyback on that so krisha when you mentioned to me in the morning right i was one of the first things you said to me Hey, we lost the cloud. Um, what was my reply to you almost immediately that, hey, yes, we did, but we have Kijun support right underneath, right? And I like to always remind all our traders in the community that we always take it one level at a time, right? Yes, we lost cloud support, which is important, but Kijun support is very, very important too. And when we have that underneath us, we have our two-day 21 EMA, our four-day 21 EMA, we need to wait for all of those levels to break, right? And the major level, the major level that we've been waiting for, like you mentioned, was that 8,600. So yes, it got uncomfortable. But we've talked about this too. Trading is often uncomfortable. If you're always looking to be comfortable, you will not be successful in this game. It was very uncomfortable. Um, and I had my doubts too, especially since the two-day Kumo twist was sitting right there. We'll come to the two-day time frame very, very soon. But Krisha, right now, this is looking extremely good. Like you like you said, we may actually close like, back into the cloud. And in my opinion, Krisha, the key shun has always been a more important important factor than even the cloud the cloud is a good guider but the kijun is the major level that bitcoin wants to be holding at least through consecutive candles right you don't want to see an open and a close within the kijun once you see that like we saw right over here on 2nd of march look at that we got an open and a close what followed right after krisha a major coronavirus scandal that took <laughs> us all the way down to the we were targeting the 200 moving average um yeah. we got there and even further Wow, a crazy, crazy move. So that's yep. what we don't want to see, right? When we see a weekly close underneath the Kijun as well as an open and a close, ooh, it's going to be very, very bad and very, very ugly. We've not seen that just yet. Every candle has been oscillating around that weekly Kijun. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Now, the thing is that on the last, um, now we, we spoke about the break, right, of that of that weekly Kijun, uh, the last time while we broke it, it was, um, and I'm looking, Sean, now I'm looking at that, that Feb, 17th Feb, as soon as we sort of lost the cloud and the Kijun, mm -hmm. and then we had, um, you know, basically capitulation <laughs> after that, all the way down to like through the 3K regions. The thing is that we lost the cloud and we lost the Kijun on, on that candle. Yes. So, I mean, the way I was looking at it, I'm like, okay, we closed underneath the cloud and I sort of tunnel visioned on the cloud and I wasn't really paying much uh, heed to the, uh, the Kijun. But clearly, as in it's 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 pretty apparent that the Kijun is yep. you know it's important. I think it takes precedent here, and I think you're you're right about that. Indeed, indeed. Well, I am right every now and then. Every now and then. <laughs> so we've been talking about the weekly, the four day um, over the past like five minutes now. We've done. We've been in this mm -hmm. video. I do want to bring all our attentions back to the two day time frame, because that's where we took our trade off, right? That's essentially yes. where we were looking to base whether we are wrong or not on this. And the two day has been the guiding factor to us. And again, going back to the dashboard, Krisha, the two day time frame is saying, hey, we are in a consolidation, right? Rather, it is saying neutral. And neutral usually means we are in a consolidation. We have to wait for Bitcoin to make a direction. And if we go back right over here to the two day time frame, we are going to see that Bitcoin is in an ascending triangle and that exact that's essentially as a trend trader especially when it gets so close so close to the apex of a consolidation you want to either one 
get a really, really good position at the bottom of the consolidation, or two, you want to be able to just wait for the consoli consolidation to make a direction, because this could either break, this could break in either direction. This could break to the upside, it could break to the downside. The probability leans towards the upside because we are in an overall bullish trend, right? And an ascending triangle does have more of a bullish posturing to it. We have higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. In fact, we have a higher wick over here too. So this does have more of a bullish posture to it, but that doesn't mean there's no chance for it at all to break towards the downside. So if you're entering here as a trader, Right now, we've been um, building a position ever since 8,600 um, level right over here on this major candle down towards, let me turn on the 21 EMA on, um, I turn off the Ichimoku for now too. So the 21 EMA has been the big guiding factor to us for the two day time frame, right? Yeah. Now it would have been great if we got the position at 8,000. We missed it over here. We bought on the daily 21 EMA that was coming in around 8,600 over here, right? And we've been building a position ever since then. And I wanna spend some time talking about this. As a trend trader, okay, if I were entering into this trade right now, I wouldn't find this really appetizing at all because look at that, there's not much that I have to wait. I have to wait only 5% more for Bitcoin to make a direction towards the upside and towards the downside, we are very close to breaking, right? Um, around maybe another 5% more to the 3% more actually to the, towards the downside. It's not appetizing at all. I can just wait for the higher probability trade and then take a position, right? That's what I want to really, really emphasize that when you're getting closer and closer towards the apex, it becomes less and less appetizing as a trend trader. You're better off just waiting for the break and taking the higher probability trade because when the break does come, it is going to be impulsive. It is going to be strong. And the two day 21 EMA, Kusha, once again, holding Bitcoin up in this consolidation. Yes. So oh, yes. And yesterday, like it, I mean, this picture looks so ugly. Like I'm, I'm still in awe as to how this actually, you know, this is all sort of panning out. And I mean, when do we close a candle, Sean? The next two day candle, we close tomorrow. We close a two day tomorrow. We close a three day tomorrow and we close a four day candle tomorrow. Exactly. It's going to be really, really important before we move on to all of that. And I yeah. quickly go through all those time frames. I want to turn on the mango ribbon. Okay. I have my 10 SME open right over here. 10 simple moving average, I have my Tenkin, the 21 EMA, and the 200 moving average, right? These three levels, these four levels rather, have been the guide for us, right? Mm. And pre we've pretty much come tested all of these levels right now. We are currently sitting against the 10 SMA. We, we, we can see how well the two day time frame has been being played on Bitcoin, okay? With these major, major levels, the Tenkin, the 21 EMA, and the 200 moving average. I would consider this a test of the 200 moving average because we came down to around 8,900 ish and the 200 simple moving average is at 8,800. The key June was a little higher than that, so we bounced off that, but this is another test just like we had on the 24th of May. Bounced off the 200 moving average and closed over the 21 EMA. Bounced off the 200 moving average one more time by front running just a little bit by creating a higher low and closed over the 21 EMA. And we've done it one more time. Close over 21, close over the tank in two this time and came and tested the 10 SMA just like we did back in the end of May. Now the question is, can we close above the 10 mm -hmm. SMA on the next two day candle, right? Because that's what we did last time. And that essentially initiated another test of the upper end of this ascending triangle at around 10,000. So this time around, if we make another move to 10,000, Kusha, I really do think we're gonna to break to the upside, but hey, again, it's just probability, it's never a certainty, okay? I think there's a, I think there's gonna be a tell. I think there's gonna be a tell on this. What do you think so, is the, um, gonna be I, the tell? I've made a couple of observations now. This two-day time frame is like magic, okay? Eh? Mm -hmm. um, but the three, now, just looking at this, this triangle, this ascending triangle that Bitcoin seems to be ranging in right now, every test of the two-day 21 has also lined up with the test of the 200 simple moving average. Yep, yep, it has. Okay, so every test has not only touched the 21, but also the 200. And um, and usually, like every sort of uh, trudge to the upside after testing those levels, we've managed to take out the ten simple moving average. Yes. But, but this time, I think what's going to be the tell here, Sean, is that if we close a two-day candle, I'm looking for a candle body close over, um, what is this region right here? Ten thousand and fifty. Okay. Okay. If you if you just mark a yep. line, that I'm yep. looking at those. I'm looking like at those candle body tops. Yes. on uh, May 6th and May 8th. I pretty much have a horizontal right over there. We can go ahead and adjust a little bit. There we go, 1,010-ish, 1,050-ish. I think yep. if we take, and uh, we also have a weekly um, level right on top of that, okay? 
the weekly level is sitting at around 10,180 ish, 10,170. And um, that, at least that's what I have on my chart. But I do believe that we are likely to take that weekly level out if we manage to close a two day candle over 10,050. Indeed, I agree with you. I, and and that sits very well in line with what we just discussed in terms of, hey, you don't have to wait too long now for Bitcoin to make a direction towards yeah. the upside, right? Honestly, Krisha, um, like I said, if I were entering the trade right now, I'd just be waiting. I'd just be waiting. To be honest, I may consider um, getting out of my position over here, uh, taking all the profits we've built and just wait anyways, right? It's tempting to stay in the position because we've been building it and we've been taking profits at key 9,750 levels for a while now. So I'm not in that much of a stressful position. But hey, why not, right? Why not? Um, I'll have to think about that and let you guys know what, what um, I've decided, but it is tempting. Like you said, 10,000, there's a clear trade to be had over here. If you close a two-day candle, like you mentioned, above that 10,020-ish, 10,050-ish level, hey, just get back in over there, right? There are better opportunities, clearer opportunities on um, other, other assets. At the moment, though, my system is telling me to still <laughs> stay in the trade. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, Krisha, you said you we talked about the 10 SMA on the two-day time frame being pretty important now if we do close above it. Something does line up with this, right? If we do close above the two-day 10 SMA, Krisha, sitting at around 9,582, it's also going to line up with a close above the three-day 10 SMA, which we just lost at around 9,568. So we'll be not only defending the three-day 21 EMA, let me turn off my horizontals for our viewers, we'll also be taking back the three-day 10 SME. Yeah. And then when we switch on over to the four-day, we're going to see a very, very pretty picture because then the four-day is going to, the four-day is already living about the 10 SME, all right? But the four-day is going to have a nice green candle body close with a nice test of the four-day 21 EMA while the three-day 10 SME was retaken and the two-day 10 SME has been retaken as well. All of this, Krisha, is going to be coming to a conclusion of fruition in 13 hours and 51 minutes, right? So we're going to know pretty much tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be an important, important candle close across all the time frames that matter. The four day, the three day, the two day, and of course the daily, the daily too. Let's go ahead and look at the daily quickly now. Let's see, like it's not as important to me, but um, at the moment, consolidating in a very, very um, consolidationary fashion. Rejecting the 21 AMA, rejecting the 10 SMA, rejecting the Tenkin as well. I've already mentioned to you, Krishat, that the 21 AMA on the daily is not as important to me. It's flatlining over here. It's more of a support and resistance level to me than it is a trend indicator at this point. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. I think the main time frame that everyone ought to be looking at on Bitcoin, at least, is that two-day time frame. It's yep. too perfect right now. It's yep. just, it's actually just perfect. Yep. So I'm going and, to switch back. Uh, where are back. your biases? Not your biases. I can't I can use the word bias. But uh, where are you leaning, Sean? If you really had to pick a side on this, on this break, okay, the conclusion to whatever Bitcoin is putting in here in terms of its consolidation, if you had to pick a side, gun to your head right now, what side are you picking? This has never been this hard for me because if you have to really ask me, my biases are sideways. I really, really want Bitcoin to go sideways. It's one of the reasons why I'm okay getting out of my position over here and taking whatever profits we have accumulated. Why? Because if Bitcoin keeps doing what it's doing, the altcoins are, are really performing well, Krisha. Like we just yeah. got a 35% to 40% win on QKC. Guys, we did a video on QKC quark chain a few days ago. It's moving now, it's doing well. These kind of um, trades are easier, right? They're, they're snappy and I don't wanna say they are, they are much bigger wins because remember a 40% win on a coin like QKC is nothing like a 40% win on Bitcoin. On Bitcoin, yeah. I'll be taking a much bigger position size, right? So keep that in mind. But the ease of the trade, right, and how quick they're coming is making them very, very, very appetizing at the moment. And there's liquidity in these um, coins. Like, they've not, there's not been liquidity for a very, very long time. And now suddenly the order books are pretty decent. So I'm liking what's going on in the altcoin market. And we've not had this kind of situation for a very, very long time. And that's precisely because Bitcoin is doing exactly what we talked about. Krisha, when Bitcoin was dumping yesterday, and 
in fact, even in the video, we talked about it, right? We talked about how I I think that this is a buy the dip market. I think that we are going into a bull market. And that was confirmed today. All the dips on the altcoins were buy the dip opportunities. We got filled on those. We got rewarded by the end of the day. Bitcoin too was basically you had your dip into the Kijun. If you did buy that dip, I didn't because I am comfort comfortable with my position size. If you did though, you were rewarded for it, right? We are, in my opinion, showing signs of a bull market yeah i right? completely agree with you there and that was that that thesis was she was shown some confirmation um in yesterday's in um yesterday's reaction rather sorry i just got a little bit distracted because i thought i wasn't recording over there my mic seemed like it. <laughs> but then i realized <laughs> yeah then i realized hey if krisha can hear me i'm clearly the mic wire is fine <laughs> um let me just go confirm that i hit the record button though okay cool we are recording 20 minutes 20 minutes in <laughs> and um i'm pretty sure ollie is gonna have a laugh at that but yeah <laughs> Yeah, going back to what I was saying, yeah, we saw that confirmation yesterday, right? Almost everything got picked up. I think everything actually did, got, did get picked up across all the altcoins and Bitcoin too. Ethereum, I'm not so sure. We'll, I have it right here. Ethereum get, got picked up too, right? Bounced a good $17. It's, it's, it, these are signs of a bull market that may show up. But what do we really want Bitcoin to do for the altcoins to keep doing what they're doing? We want Bitcoin to have these dips and then get picked up into the range and then keep doing what it's doing without that impulsive move. Because as soon as we see that impulsive move, the altcoin charts against the Bitcoin pairing in the very least are going to look a little bit ugly. We've been victim to that before, Krisha, <laughs> both of us, right? So I'm, I'm on guard for that. I'm on guard for that. And as long as Bitcoin's sitting in this area over here, right? I'm fine with Bitcoin grinding down Right, I'm fine with Bitcoin grinding down and actually having a bearish move towards the downside as long as it's grinding. And again, this is something we talked about yesterday. I said, hey, Krisha, my bias is towards Bitcoin. If it does dip, I want it to go down slowly because I think because we are in a bull market, all coins will still do well in that scenario. But the one scenario of Bitcoin or rather the all coins won't do well is if Bitcoin makes an impulsive move towards the upside because I don't think we're grinding up. I don't think we're grinding up. If we make a move past 10,050 um, ish, like you said, a two day candle close above there, there's going to be no grind. There's going to be an explosion of a move. And in that case, Kusha, I'll be getting out of every single altcoin. I don't care which coin it is, whether it's Chainlink, Cardano, Zilliqa. I'm in Zilliqa um, at the moment, enjoying th that trend, but I will be dumping that because my priority, n no offense to any of you guys who, in who love Zilliqa for the fundamentals, blah, blah, blah. My priority is to protect my Bitcoin and yeah, may leave a little bit in, may leave a little bit in, depending on how strong the chart's looking, but I'll be getting our all coins. Kusha, what are your thoughts on that? No, I completely agree. We start taking out, we have a single freaking two day candle close over 10,050. I think it's it's game for the altcoins. Yep. I think it's game for the altcoins. Um, but no, this is a this is a very very interesting picture. I think what's really gonna be even stronger, okay, for tomorrow's close, Sean. If we are able to take out nine thousand five hundred and seventy for tomorrow's close, mm -hmm. that's gonna be really strong. Man, that this is gonna be really really strong. It's gonna be very very strong. I think that 9,600 level, Kusha, on the tank, and that's going yeah, to be... Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's basically that yeah, one. I'm, yeah, I'm just sort yeah. of, uh, I'm reading my... Yeah, I <laughs> see, I see. numbers right off my, mm. uh, my scale. It's a, definitely an important day com showing, uh, coming up tomorrow. So, either way, we I think I think we may have to, Kusha, be a little bit careful on the altcoins, but they're looking so good. So, with that note, guys, I'm just going to do a quick recap, okay, on the two-day time frame. We bounced off the tank, and we bounced off the 20 on AMA. We clo we're cl looks like we're closing above both. It's not confirmed just yet. It's not confirmed just yet. 13 hours, 44 minutes to go, right? Looking good right now. Um, would Can I, be I add something to that? Yeah, go for it. When you when Sean says it's not confirmed, guys, think about it. It's not confirmed. Wait on that close. Okay, for those, uh, for people who are playing the two-day time frame and got shook out on yesterday's move with, mm -hmm. right, on their positions, if they if they had loose hands and they sure. Positions. Krisha, yeah. could you repeat your last sentence? I do believe you got cut off there for a second. Oh, man. Um, I, I was saying that, um, you know, it's important to wait on that close because for anyone who actually took positions, long positions based on the two-day time frame and did not wait on the two-day candle body close, mm -hmm. 
just got screwed over if they got shook out on yesterday's yep. move to the downside and i don't um i wouldn't even blame them right knowing i've gotten shook out of positions in the past before is it, it 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 sucks it sucks but which is why we set out these rules for our exits more important than anything right our exits are always the most important when i get into position i say i am exiting under these conditions no matter what if i have to take the loss i'll take the loss i will not let the price action that is unfolding dictate how i exit it is the person who set up the trade plan right that dictates how i exit and hey i looked at the clock the two day candle had just opened yes it sucked it would mean two days of immense pain right if bitcoin um did not bounce of course bitcoin bounced and made us all happy and it is what it is guys again we go all of this in the risk management module this is why i spent five and a half hours on the risk management module right kusha because it is so complex in terms of mindset and how you place your stops how you get invalidated everything how to think about your strategy in the long run all these things it takes a lot to fully drill these ideas into people's minds which is why it's just so impossible for me to talk about um risk management very very quickly in these daily videos um you got to you got to have the right mindset guys you got to have the right mindset it's not always going to work out i take losses all the time right the other day we talked about theta right i took the loss there got invalidated got out of the trade but it's about sticking to your plan you need to be okay taking losses and if bitcoin gives me a loss i will take the loss right if gives me a profit i'll take the profit i try to stay as emotionless as possible on either direction I've reached a stage Krisha where I want to get as emotionless with my wins as I am with my losses. Losses don't really affect me anymore. It's my wins that are my biggest detriment right now because I feel like when I have those wins that come win after win after win like even four wins, five wins, especially with the all coin markets the way they are, right? What tends to happen? We tend to take on more and more risk. We tend to start getting blind spots. At least me, at least me. Maybe you guys are different, but when I say we I'm talking about me. I get riskier and I take bad trades so i want to be emotional emotionless even with my wins and that's that's something i have to work on yeah no i i completely completely agree um but yeah it's you know, half, but, half the game is an yeah, emotional game right it's, yeah. all, it's all an emotional battle with yourself when it comes to trading yeah so um enough of that we basically went for uh, we went over the two day the three day the four day the weekly and um discussed the daily too very very briefly but i i don't think that's the time frame that people should be looking at if you guys are by all means um ignore what i'm doing everything i say is not financial advice it's just basically me giving out my thou- my thoughts my thoughts out aloud again guys two day we can wait for the candle close depending on what the, what this does um if bitcoin closes over the 10 sma coming around 9500 it's going to look really really good we're going to be taking out three day levels too the four days are going to look really good and yep simply have to wait for a direction to be chosen until then it's the all coins that have actually been making directional moves in particular kusha today i want to look at cardano because i've been looking to get back into a cardano position it bounced far more aggressively than i expected and yeah let's go ahead and take a fresh look ada btc we will start it woof kusha i have the two day time frame open up right over here guess where we bounce two day tank in two day 21 ema giving us a really wow. really nice strong i this is that's strong man that, that is, is ridiculous really strong i'm i don't sh- i, I hey. don't think this this dip happened on bitmex krisha i'm not i'm not entirely certain on that we'll have to check the bitmex chart but either way if you guys are trading uh, cardano mm-hmm. on the uh on the spot chart on binance and you guys caught this congrats you freaking relations this is that by the dip opportunities that you guys saw and all of you who did i know a couple from the mango grove community who actually caught this dip great stuff man great stuff um it's just it's just really really strong it's looking really good look at the candle close krisha i mean yeah, if it closes here right if it closes here it's going to be it's a beautiful candle close yep. i was actually i actually uh, analyzed um auto bdc today just uh, you know in the morning and um i was looking at the weekly time frame i only looked at the weekly time time frame and i was kind of um, neutral about the chart right because i do realize i i sort of noticed that we did close underneath a major sort of weekly level that I was that was eyeing and but i mm-hmm. never looked at this chart now you see this yeah. changes things yeah. when you see a candle like that guys yeah like just... you need to reassess and possibly look for a bullish posture 
um, in that um, your bearish trade or your bearish, um, let's say, analysis is invalidated. Okay, you need to look for invalidation points at, um, at when you see candles like this. So, Kusha, especially if you're in a short position. So, Kusha, I just turned on the weekly time frame after you mentioned it, and um, the the Kijun K has been pressing down on price. It just recently shot down on price, right? Yeah. And the Tenkin shot up on price. So that was the first thing I noticed. But then I turned on my horizontals, and I still have my horizontals, my drawings from when we took our trade on Cardano, and that was when the Tenkin was sitting all the way down over here at around 579 Satoshi. If you do remember, that was essentially yeah. the um, the reason one of the reasons we took our trade, right? Because we retook the tank and retook the 21 MA and we are consolidating above it in the squeeze like formation. I'm going to go ahead and draw it out for people. And that was when we got really, really bullish on Cardano. So we broke up since then, right? We went and met the horizontal that we were looking at around 916. And I believe that 916 horizontal was the major monthly level that Trader Frazier from the Mango Grove, from the Mango Seed, pointed out to us because you and mm -hmm. I were looking at 876, if you do remember, right? And Frazier's like, hey, we have monthly resistance coming somewhere around here. So we came and smacked against both on the um, weekly and monthly time frame and got rejected there. Now the key issue is coming down to press on price ever since then, which again would have given me pause, but Krisha, look at that. We came wicked off that major horizontal at 697 that we had drawn. I had my alert, alert over there too, and I remember I was in the kitchen and that my my car, my phone was buzzing with Cardano alerts. I was getting emails from TradingView. I'm like, what is going on? I don't remember setting an alert. But then I remember this was my alerts from all the way back then, from when we were, when we took our positions, right? We were looking for yeah. Cardano to break this level so we could add to our position. And that same alert got re-triggered. I was like, what's going on? And like, we saw that massive dip. Of course, I didn't buy into it, missed it completely. But look at the way it got bought back. It was like yeah. essentially giving the entire community, the Cardano community, all the fans, and a re-opportunity at the same trade that we took, right? That and and that's bullish. The fact that it got we saw the reaction towards the upside and it's holding. It's holding over there, Krisha. That's yeah. bullish. So what I want to do now is I want to dive into the lower time frames. And I'm gonna look at the twelve hour time frame. That's the one I like to look at a lot when pertaining to all coins. And it's actually a fresh look for me guys. So let's go ahead and see what we have over here. I cleared all my indicators. Let's hide my horizontals too. And wow, Kusha. That is a bullish response on the twelve hour time frame if I ever saw one. Wow, look at that twelve hour candle. Completely no, undoing everything, right? It's looking really good, man. I think that that was a that was a powerful, powerful candle. It cannot be uh, overlooked. When you see something like that, just know that someone stepped in and they stepped in big time. And not just that, Sean. I'm, I'm noticing a, um, a falling channel on this, a falling channel that we've sort of broken up from, and we're holding it as support right now. I'm not sure if you're seeing it from the very uh, top. Um, all the way down to the price is at. I I am kind of seeing it, but I. Uh, Oh, I see what you're. I see what you're drawing. I see what you're drawing. So uh, you're saying that the. Ooh, I see what you're drawing. I see what you're seeing now. Good eye, good eye, Krisha. Really good eye. Because I would not have. Uh, ha had you not mentioned it, I would not have attempted to even draw this. And so it looks like we're retesting the channel right now. Wow. So yes. we bounced with one strong candle right through <laughs> the falling channel. And so we could have a measured move for this. There are two ways to look at this, guys. This is, um, I'm going to go with the more bullish way if I do look for a trade. Okay, so the measured move actually points points back to the neckline of 877 Satoshi Krisha. Yes. Right? right. But um, I would actually look for this to get all the way back to the top of the channel at 911 and then possibly see continuation after that. This is looking really, because of the bullish nature of the chart thus far, right? I'm going to turn on my mango ribbon, Krisha, and see uh -huh. if we have a way to look for a trade opportunity on this. Hide all of my horizontals. So currently we're seeing a seeing some resistance against the 21 EMA. The tankin is underneath over there. Hmm, this is not easy, this is not easy. So this is what I'm gonna look for. If I were to look for a trade over here, I'm gonna, I wanna see a strong candle body close on this 12 hour time frame in the next one and a half hour. Doesn't look like we're getting it right now. It looks like we, are, we may see a rejection. If we don't get that, I'd be looking for some consolidation going sideways a little bit and then a close over the 21 EMA. Perhaps even a dip down to the 10 can maybe a buy opportunity, but I want to see good candle close above the 21 EMA, and then I'll be looking to rebuy into this. And then, hey, 
let's go ahead and look at the monthly now, Krishna. Okay, because this is the big thing I'm looking for out. And we mentioned this multiple times. I think it was in yesterday's video. We said, hey, a coin like Cardano is actually threatening to start making monthly higher highs and monthly higher lows, right? Yeah. So that major monthly level I'll be looking for, Krishna, is 1,702. 1,702 Satoshi, sorry. Let me say that again, 1,700 um, Satoshi. Yeah, pretty much that. If we get there, and we start closing candle bodies above that level, that's when I know it's game on. That's when I know this is getting back to all-time highs on its Bitcoin pairing, Krisha. It's looking really, really, really good. And that, essentially, after that, after 1700 Satoshi, we'll be looking at 3700 Satoshi, which is another 2x, a little bit more than 2x, and then 52,000 Satoshi, which is again a little bit less than 2x. But from this region around here, Krisha, if it gets all the way there, if it gets all the way there, we are looking at almost a 600% move on Cardano. Now, would you have the guts to hold a position? for Cardano already there. I know the Cardano believers would do that and that's what I think will make them the winners of this altcoin market, the people who actually, actually hold on to trades that turn out this way. So, ooh, it's gonna be hard. Traders yeah. are gonna find it really, really difficult and hodlers are gonna be finding it I easy. I think people are, people are gonna find it difficult. Anyone who's been in this market since the last- um, Bear well, market. Both yeah, you've, you've sort of been through the last bull cycle and you've been through the last bear cycle where there was a, there was a lot of pain, right? There's a lot of pain. And, um, you know, the, the whole exuberance thing, you know, really died out. And people started playing ranges. A lot of them started getting to margin trades, et cetera, et cetera. But um, you're right in that people are going to find it very, those people especially are going to find it very hard to hold because everyone's so, like, um, accustomed to pain you know, in the crypto markets and that they're all expecting this this 20x moves that they had experienced back in the last bull cycle. Okay, they never got it this time. Indeed. And so if if we are indeed heading into the next bull run, a lot of those people that endured that pain will have loose hands this time around. Yep. And I wouldn't blame them at all, but I do think that the caliber of the professional trader or the true trader is going to be his ability to change his mindset, right? Change his mindset and understanding that, hey, sometimes it's better to be a dumb bull, in this case, a dumb hodler, than to be a smart bear, or in this case, a smart trader, right? Because trying to overtrade in these markets may be costly. And I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I'm gonna be able to do this perfectly. No, it's gonna be really, really difficult for me too, guys. But I have to, like, like yesterday, right? I had to consciously tell myself and even tell you, right, that morning, as well as in the video, that I believe that it's time to be excited. Even if you have to summon that excitement from the depths of your stomach, and say, hey, we are in a bull market, I want to hodl. Yeah. It might be the time. I'm not saying it's there just yet, but the signs are there, the signs are there, and we may just get rewarded for being a little bit more strong with our hands. Of course, you need to have your invalidation. Of course, you need to have your risk. Don't get me wrong in that. Do not, guys, hold your positions down to those major dips. Once you get into a downtrend, get out, get out. You need to have your invalidation, but, what time frame that you're taking your trades on may need to start getting a little bit more lenient. Okay, and by lenient, I know that you guys who, who are on the Mango C program understand exactly what I mean. Okay, so please, please do not take what I'm saying as this hodl down to zero, guys. I would never, ever, ever say that. So, Krisha, any final thoughts before we wrap up this video? Uh, no, nothing for Ada at least. I mean, Ada's yeah. um, th this buyback has been pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. What I'll be looking for to see for, to look for um, further upside is uh, whether or not we can actually settle above that daily ten simple moving average. Right now, we're sort of getting sandwiched between the daily ten and the daily twenty one. Mm. And starting out yeah. that the daily ten simple, I think we're going. Yep. A definite, definite way to look for further upside is if we start closing a daily candle above 8,800 ish. If we start doing that, then it's clear cut to me. But um, again, the day 10 SMA would be a little bit more, um, it'd be, give you a better position, that's for sure. I wonder if that lines up with anything on the 12 hour. Not really. Let's see the Ichimoku if it's giving us anything to work with. Um, if it wants to load, did I click that? Okay, so trading view is being a little bit laggy, or could be my internet. Maybe my internet. All right, so with that. I'm going to wrap up the video. I'm going to say 
guys if you did catch this dip good freaking job hey if you didn't there are many many trade opportunities in the market right now do not fomo be patient patience will be rewarded and until then do the mango way do the stress free way i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any altcoin suggestions for us leave a comment down below the one with the most votes or mentions rather will be getting our attention